NFTs. Best known as the founder of Lava Records and has helped launch the careers of a lot of people, Katy Perry, Tori Amos, Lord, to name a few. But he's also passionate about helping people who've been wrongfully convicted. Um, he is on founding board member of the Innocence Project. I'm sure you know that organization. It's been in the news for many, many years helping people. He's the host of a podcast. It's called Wrongful Conviction. And Jason Flom is here with us now from New York. Jason, when you see that video of Matthew with his mac and cheese and with this bird and at that piano, could you have ever imagined that the work that you do would lead you to helping him and his family? Yeah, I mean, it was very intentional. And, um, you know, I was, uh, I, I, I'm very grateful, I want to say, first of all, first for you, to you for providing a forum uh, for this incredible story and this incredible family, and also to Governor Northam for uh, doing the courageous and compassionate and and right thing um, to bring Matthew home. So yes, I I, I I was envisioning this all along. I'm just uh, you know relieved and happy that uh, I think between the three of us, Matthew Laverne and myself, uh, we were all in different locations, but none of us slept uh, the night uh, before his release. So much of this case surrounds how people with disabilities are treated, um, particularly by authority. And I remember in Chicago, Illinois, covering a story of a man who was sentenced to life in prison. He was freed, but when tested, he had the capacity of, of a, a, I think he was a second grader. But none of that was taken into consideration. That case was different. He ended up free as well. But in Matthew's case, what Laverne is saying and what many people who look at the justice system, how people who need this help are treated so that they can have justice as well, because we want them to be treated fair and just. You're absolutely right. And we want everyone to be treated fairly and justly. I mean, it's called a justice system, but we've begun to refer to it as a criminal legal system because there's so little justice in it. And, you know, in the interrogation room, people don't understand this. And I'm going to ask you, I always admonish my audience uh, that, that listens to my show, and I'm going to uh, say the same thing to your audience, that if you're brought in for questioning, please don't say anything until you have a lawyer there to help you. The only thing you should say is your name, and I want a lawyer, and then stop talking, because the situation will uh, uh, will go downhill fast. If and, and and that and they may not even tell you you're a suspect when you're first brought in, but if you start talking, they're going to, you know, you're, you're going to end up in a narrative that they want, and and you're going to dig a hole that you won't be able to get out of very likely. So please, if you're brought in to the interrogation room. And remember, they're allowed to lie. In the United States, unlike other Western countries, they're allowed to lie to you in the interrogation room. And for people who have challenges, um, as, as you referenced the Chicago case, and there's so many like that, there are many people on death row in America who have, or who've been executed, who have IQs around 60 or 70. And it's, you know, or, or suffer from other, you know, impairments. And it's unconscionable to me that these people are, uh, just trampled on by our system. It doesn't make any sense, and we need to fix it. Laverne, this fight would not have been waged without you. When you look at your child's future now and the, the, the alarm that you've sounded about this particular case and how it happens far too often, what do you see for him in, in the future? What do you see for yourself? Well, I see um, a bright future. This is not going to hold him back at all. This is what I, I believe this has given him more strength than he's ever had before in his life. And I know he's going to go to school. He wants to teach. He wants to also advocate for others that he has left behind that are also innocent. And I, I think, you know, with, um, with Jason and others that he can become that advocate and because that's what you need. You, you need somebody that has actually experienced, um, you know, the injustice mm. for, to, to be able to speak out. And, and that's what I see for him. Right. He's always right. been outspoken, but this has really given him the strength. And, and, you know, we talk about it a little bit, but I, I see, I see more, I see a bright future and I see, you know, him helping 
our judicial system to become better. You know, it it, it is. Well, thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your journey with us. Matthew, obviously, we will continue to follow all of the things ahead for you. And um, we appreciate you providing us with this first interview after your release. Thank you.